Hi, I'm Judith Dreyer. Thank you for joining me for this podcast series, The Holistic Nature of Us. My intent is to take us, you and I, into a better understanding of the concepts behind our holistic nature and how that ties directly to the holistic nature of the world around us. How can we connect the dots in practical ways that we are nature and nature is in us? I will be featuring authors and educators, practitioners and others whose passion for this earth helps us create bridges. We'll see what's trending, what's relevant to our world today, not just for land use, but to connect the dots between ourselves and nature. It's time for practical action and profound inner change so our natural world is valued once again. Today I'd like to introduce you to Janet Pagan. Janet is a certified holistic health practitioner with the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. As a certified health coach, Ayurvedic nutritionist, Reiki master, and spiritual counselor, she works with uh, the field of child welfare, serving children and families, and she's done this for over uh, 15 years. She's also a spiritual counselor. Please welcome the Reverend Janet Pagan. Good morning. Good morning, Judith. Uh, I, I want to tell our listeners that um, I met Janet at a very uh, wonderful event recently, and she uh, let me know that she was an Ayurvedic uh, nutritionist, and I invited her here to talk about Ayurveda as a science and as a medical model as well as from a nutrition point of view. So Janet, why don't you um, tell us something about your journey, how you got into Ayurveda, and, and what's that meant for you, or what that's, what's, how that's helped you? Yeah, so I started my journey with the Institute of Integrated Nutrition, and that is where I got my health coding, coaching certification. During that certification process, they go over 300, more than 300 dietary theories and practices, and one of them was Ayurveda. And at the time, I was actually 90 pounds heavier, and learning about Ayurveda and being exposed to the concept supported me in my spiritual journey as well as my own health journey. And from there, I found out about a Ayurvedic nutrition program in New York City, um, which I studied under Dr. Naina Marbali from India at Ayurveda's World. And that's how I got started uh, in Ayurveda. And since then, I have been able to minimize my own health problems and not suffer from sinus infections, uh, which I had been doing regularly for several years. And had somebody, you know, a doctor or medical person asked me about my diet and what I was eating, I could have avoided surgery and I could have been more imbalanced. And I'm really happy where I am now with my with my health and the holistic model and the medicine model. And it's been very, very enlightening. That's wonderful. My understanding of Ayurveda is that it's the science of life. And they have two key points to their medical model. That one is to keep our immune system strong and to promote longevity. And they do that through a... a, a mind body spirit approach so every aspect of who we are from the mind to the emotion to the psychology to the spiritual to the physical is all incorporated in their approach and from what I understand it's based on nature could you tell us something about that yes so it starts with uh, when we are first entering into this world it starts with uh, our biological parents and their constitutions at, at the time of conception. And that is what leads us to be who we are, the connection between the pure consciousness, the spirit, and the prana. And what happens is with those with those doshas, the vata, kapha, and pitta, which I'll go into more detail in a few minutes, they are also associated with the elements. So the universe, Ayurveda states that the universe is and everything around us is made up of five elements earth air fire water and space or ether 
And each element exists in each of our cells. It exists in our body. And that's what is the beginning of us being in tune with nature and the seasons and the life cycles. So we know that fire um, is our in our body is, is our metabolism. We are, know that our bodies are 90% water. And the liquid in our bodies also includes our blood, our saliva, our sweat. Earth is represented by our bones, our cells, our tissues. Uh, air, we know that is necessary to breathe, oxygen. And the ether is the source of all matter, the sound, the vibration, the space that we occupy, the space between our cells and our bodies. And each of those um, are associated with the doshas and with the seasons as well. So... Just to be clear, the basic framework for understanding ourselves physically is through uh, and in relationship to the earth is through the dosha types, which incorporates the elements, correct? Yes, exactly. So the dosha types, um, individuals, there are seven different dosha types. So vata, kapha, pitta, a person can be, you know, one of those, or a person can be... Uh, tridoshic, which is they have vata, kapha, and pitta. And then you have individuals that can have a dual dosha, such as vata, pitta, pitta, kapha, or kapha, vata. And as far as the seasons go, so, so vata is represented by the elements in air and space. So the seasons associated with, with the air and the space are autumn into winter. And then kapha, is represented in the elements of earth and water, which is the seasons of late winter into spring. And then pizza is fire and water, and that is represented in the season of summer. So knowing your dosha um, will be able to tell you what element you're most uh, prone to have these imbalances and connections with, and then how that relates into the seasons. So, so give me an example. We know pitta is summer. We know pitta is fire. So what should a, a pitta predominant pitta type be aware of? You know, we've had intense heat this summer. How would a pitta approach that? So pittas, um, even, although pitta doshas may like to lie in the sun, it's really not good for pitta individuals because it's fire. The sun is represented by fire. So now you have fire on fire. And for pizzas, it's best to stay as cool as possible, not inundate themselves with so much heat and that fire energy. The recommendation would be to remain cool, go to the beach, go swimming, go to the pool, stay in air, con- you know, more air conditioned spaces. We pizza individuals need to be very careful about overheating themselves and burning themselves out. Right, and we can do that with food, can't we? Can't we, like, I, I remember somebody I met a few years ago who, you know, start, drank lots of coffee during the day, which I understand is heat producing, and mm-hmm. had tons of garlic and loved the spiciest foods possible, uh, but the person had some health issues. Um, with that, that kind of, does that create an imbalance? Absolutely. So all of those things that you mentioned, right? Garlic is associated with with pizza. It's hot. It's spicy. Um, spicy red peppers. Spicy chili powder. You know, all of these these hot spices, these hot foods. Again, it's it's fired with fire. So pizzas need to be careful with the all doshas need to be mindful of the spices that they use. So pizzas, for example, you know, having garlic, maybe balancing that out with some rosemary or basil, there has to be something um, to offset and balance out some of those heating foods. And you want to use some of the cooler spices, some of the spices that, you know, don't have as much heat so that it can be balanced. And especially in the summertime, um, pizza should definitely be staying away from some of those hotter spices because, again, you know, it's summertime, your pizza, your fire, you're out in the sun, that's more fire. Now you're having these hot spices, that's more fire. So pizzas need to be really, really careful in the summertime. 
Interesting. So now, um, do you have any uh, suggestion for all of us as we go into autumn? Because that means the season's changing, things are getting cooler. You said it's related to Vata. What would you suggest for that season? Because we're approaching that now. So if you if one is a Vata dosha and we are approaching uh, autumn as the seasons start to change, we are in um, entering into Vata season. So for for our Vatas who are those people that are always on the go, those are the ones who who you hear say, oh I don't have time, or they're walking and talking and they're on the phone and they're you know having breakfast on the go and you know our Vatas. Um, during this season, as we approach autumn, if if that sounds like you, Vatas, please stay grounded. Incorporate some earthy foods into your diet, something that is going to support you and ground you. Um, vatas are the ones who vata imbalance is when you know you're looking for that one piece of paper and it's like, well, where did I put it? I just had it, and you know. So if you find yourself a little bit more disorganized, a little bit more, um, you know, out there, do some things that can support you in grounding yourself. And some really good, um, you know, as we go into this. Um, you know, vatsas can benefit from garlic and clove and black pepper, can, cayenne pepper, right? So the complete opposite of, of pizza. You know, vatsas can use some fire. They can use some earth, um, you know, some minced meat, things like that. They benefit from hot, oily foods. Hmm, interesting. Well, those are great tips for us, too, as we go into the next season. I like that. Um, you talked uh, to me about the psychological constitution with the senses. Could you go, could you go into more detail with that? So our cycle, so yes, we spoke a little bit, I mentioned about our, our physical and the doshas and the elements and the seasons. Uh, Ayurveda also takes into consideration the astral body, right? Going back to the ether and, and space. And that's what, uh, that's where our psychological constitutions come in. And our psychological constitutions can be sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. And our psychological constitutions can be shaped by social environment, but also influenced by nutrition. And again, there, there are several different combinations of those uh, constitutions in a psychological sense. And this is where our, you know, people who have depression, you want to look at you know, for example, coming into the winter, like I said, winter is kapha time. So this is where our coffers need to be careful with kind of like those winter blues. And if you feel yourself becoming depressed, you want to take note of your, your mental state. A lot of people say, oh, it's raining outside, it's bringing me down. And some people say, oh, it's raining outside, I feel like dancing in the rain, right? So really paying attention to how these weather systems affect you mentally and emotionally and psychologically. You know, are you, you know, drawing in the blinds? You know, do you find yourself with less energy? So for my kapha people, as we come into, you know, when winter approaches, be mindful of maybe you might be too grounded and you need something airy to lift you up or you need some spice in your life to lift you up. And so psychologically, we also want to be in tune with, with how we're feeling emotionally and energetically. Hmm. And you like to recommend working with our senses to sort of shift some of our emotional responses. So you talked about sounds and smells and touch and sight. Um, and there's also yoga poses for each of the dosha types. Is that correct? Yes, that is absolutely correct. So this Ayurveda, again, my interest in Ayurveda spans over all of these. And it is, you know, very comprehensive so for those who like yoga and are interested in learning more about the yoga uh, price uh, poses I'm sorry in terms of yoga poses there are Ayurvedic yoga teachers and practi practitioners so if you are a yoga person and you're looking for something to balance you out uh, take into consideration taking an Ayurvedic yoga class you know kaphas um, if again, if you're grounded, you may not be doing a downward dog. You may need to be doing another position, and vatas maybe need that downward dog position to help ground them. And pittas, you may be somewhere in between. So, looking into what type of yoga would be beneficial for you would be 
would be also another way to, in terms of self-care. What I like about Ayurveda is the, is the expanses, expansiveness of it. So even taking into consideration physical activity, uh, physical activity in terms of exercise, some pers- some doshas benefit more from gardening, things of that nature that um, are not as aerobic, whereas there are doshas like pizzas, for example. I mentioned swimming in the summertime. Pizzas do very well with more aerobic exercises and things that you know keep them moving. Um, so it's, that can also be discussed as well with an Ayurvedic nutritionist and, and pr- practitioner in terms of what exercises may be beneficial for you, what activities might be beneficial for you. Going uh, with the senses, I do a lot of work with, um, as you mentioned, Judith, the five senses and, you know, what smells, tastes, feels, and sounds and sights and colors are beneficial for each dosha as well. And we talked a little bit about that, you know, in terms of some of the seasonings um, with the food. But there's also color schemes and sounds and feels that go along with that as well. Mm, That's really interesting. So, again, it's a very holistic model because it takes into all of our, um, like I said at the beginning, all aspects of ourself as a human being. But it also uh, looks at nature to find some of those answers. Um, Janet, could you talk a little bit about um, the, the Ayurveda tries to find the root cause of a disease. Could you give us an example of, you know, in, in Western medicine, we talk about the symptom. Um, in other models, they try to find the root cause. And Ayurvedic medicine is one of those. Could you give us an example of that? Right, absolutely, yes. And that's, again, I'm very much about that. As I shared earlier, I had my own sinus issues and for me, it's, you know, I go to the doctor, I have this sore throat, and they give me antibiotics for the sore throat, and then the next thing I know, I have this um, build up in my nose, you know, this mucus, and then they're like, okay, try a nasal spray, and we'll address the mucus, and then, you know, then I have this full-blown-on sinus infection. So what started out as a sore throat, you know, it, it increased, and now it's affecting my thinking, my brain. I don't know if any of the listeners have had a sinus infection, but it really affects everything, your sight, your your eyes, your head, your brain, your mind. Um, it's horrible. And so had somebody done a more in-depth, you know, any uh, practitioner, a doctor, had done more of an in-depth assessment, like I said, in terms of asking what is your diet or what, you know, what do you think is causing this congestion and, you know, these things, um, getting to the root of it would have avoided me having to have surgery for my sinuses. And since I've become a holistic health practitioner, I haven't had a sinus infection in, you know, several years. That's that's amazing. That's what I love about these systems. And, you know, you have direct experience with that. And, you know, my understanding is, is you know, sometimes a cough, we, we, we accept it. It's a little catchy cough. We don't think about it. We get very busy. We get maybe add more stress to our life. And before you know it, we've got bronchitis. And then there's folks here that seem to always have some kind of chronic bron- bronchitis, and then eventually they end up with pneumonia. So what I see is a progression through the one system of the, the lung and breathing system system that's gone deeper um, and has more serious consequences and Ayurveda tries to nip it in the bud so to speak and I love yeah and I love the garden terms with Ayurveda you know nip something in the bud go to the root you know uh, nature's got the answer always absolutely and and that's the thing it's you know once we're aware of those imbalances as soon as an individual is aware of any little imbalance um getting to it immediately and addressing it immediately does save a lot of stress and um saves a lot of stress in the long run now i'm at the point where and i keep going back to myself as an example simply because as an ayurvedic nutritionist and as a as a holistic healer i never recommend something to my clients that i work with that i haven't tried myself and not to say that what i have done for me is going to work for someone else however it's the approach right so whatever approach i have tried if i've tried um a certain a certain ointment, 
you know, and I know that an individualized ointment could be the answer, then I would come up with an individualized ointment for my client or clinician because I know that, you know, that type of ointment will work. And it's just a matter of, you know, again, changing the herbs or changing the ingredients that are used to accommodate that person's imbalance or dosha. The minute I have a sore throat or I feel something coming on, I'm drinking certain teas with different spices, whether it's cinnamon and honey or a chamomile tea or a mint tea or a eucalyptus tea. Whatever I'm feeling, um, drinking some type of tea or using some type of poultice, nipping in the bud immediately, I'm telling you, Judith, within 24 hours, I'm fully recuperated. The symptoms are gone and it doesn't escalate into anything else. I haven't had the flu in over five years. Yeah, I I believe you because I've um, stepped into these models myself personally and I know from firsthand experience that they really do work and we, our body is resilient and if we can access the intelligence that's in the cells and the herbs help us and some of the foods help us and as you mentioned, you know, um, what are we looking at, Uh, what are we hearing, Uh, what are we tasting, if we really pay attention to our our whole being in that moment and approach ourselves from each one of these senses and experiences with something specific, we bring in healing. The body, the body knows how to heal. We just have to give it a little boost or a little bit of help some, in some way. Uh, and I like Ayurvedic for that. Um, is uh, Ayurvedic, do they, are they a vegetarian? Mostly, uh, yeah. So a lot of uh, my my practitioner, my doctor, Naina Mudbali, who I studied under, she was a very vegetarian. And despite that, however, there are still recommendations for those who eat poultry, who eat beef. So again, going back to the doshas, you know, it's like if you're going to eat chicken, you know, pizzas, stay away from the skin that you love so much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> stay that's away funny. From- <laughs> Stay away from the legs, the thighs, you know, stick to the white meat. And, you know, for my vatas, you know, who need a little extra oil in their life, you know, have that crispy chicken skin, uh, you know. So, again, Judith, it really is about mindfulness. It really is about, you know, we, we crave the things that, you know, could be our worst enemy, kaffas. You love the carbs. Kaffas, you got to stay away from the carbs. Find another way to meet that sweet tooth, that need for for sugar. You know, use natural sugars, fruits, and things of that nature. Stay away from the breads and the cookies and the cakes. Um, You know, a lot of it is, is... a lot of practitioners talk about, well, don't do this, don't do that. And Ayurveda really talks about this is what you should do. And that's mm-hmm. also what I like about it, right? Mm-hmm. Because the minute that a lot of us put limitations on ourselves, we become somewhat rebellious. It's human nature. It's like, oh, well, I can't have this and I can't have that. Well, this is what you can do, right? This is what you can have. You know, try it. See if you enjoy it. See if it resonates with mm-hmm. you and you know you very very well may be very surprised uh yeah i agree and i and i've also seen in my travels and in my um my own nutrition uh experiences working in the health food industry usually what we crave is probably not the best for us you know that's that's mm-hmm. a a pattern we have to break in some way well janet this has been very um enlightening and very informative and could you give our readers i mean i'm sorry could you give our listeners uh some tips some practical tips to bring into their everyday life absolutely so because ayurveda is very individualistic one of the things that everybody can do is chew your food at least 30 times when you're eating sit down to your meal enjoy your meal be present be mindful taking in the spices, the flavors, try different flavors, try different spices, listen to different sounds of music, see how you respond to them. You know, are there some sounds that you find more calming or soothing? Are there some sounds that you that you find aggravating or irritating? And which sounds do you find invigorating and energetic? Because it's different for each person. In terms of our sights, you know, looking, thinking about your color scheme. What kind of colors do you have a tendency to wear more? Are you one of those people who wear black all the time? What would it be for you to wear, you know, a, a brown or even a green? 
And if you're somebody who's always wearing light colors, you know, pastels, what would that be like for you to switch to a brown or a neutral color even? And in terms of, you know, touching and feeling, how often do you give yourself that self-massage? How often do you allow that tension in your shoulders and your necks to have some relief? Or how often do you soak your feet after a long day if you've been on your feet, right? Paying attention to those little aches and pains in our bodies, those, again, going back to the root causes and the first signs, um, thinking about those. And then smell, you know, are you using aromatherapy? What what do you smell? If you are a cook, do you cook? Do you pay attention to the smells in your kitchen? If not, do you use incense or oils? And pay attention to the different types of, again, feelings or sentiments that come along with these types of smells in your life. And so using our five senses and being aware, being present, using mindfulness, that's something, Judith, that everybody can do and, and start to work in and practice and taking the time to just quiet your mind, even if it's for five minutes. Oh, that's great. We always need reminders about being uh, in the moment. So to all the listeners out there, you know, when when the podcast is over, you know, enjoy this moment that you're in wherever you are. I think that's, that's great. And I love how you uh, tied in all the senses, uh, which are very simple things to do um, in our daily life. And I really appreciate that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Um, not at this time. Um, it's just going back to reiterating that be present and take that time because you're the most important person to yourself. And if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to be productive and do the things that you need to do around you and for those around you and for those you care about. And oftentimes with self care, the most, we forget that the most important person is yourself. Mm. Wise words, Janet. All I can say is thank you. So I want to thank everyone for joining us at The Holistic Nature of Us. I want to thank Janet again for her practical advice and her inspiring uh, message for all of us. Uh, I. This is Judith Dreyer, author of At the Garden's Gate book and blog. My book is available through my website, which is www.judithdreyer.com, as well as several distribution arms, such as Amazon, Nook, Goodreads, and more. I'd like to remind all of you to please like and share the podcast. Let's support each other and get the word out, because it's time for practical action and profound interchange, so our natural world is valued once again. So I want to thank Janet again for all her sharing. Here is her contact information. Phone Janet at 646-408-0759. Her email is phoenixsoulhp at gmail.com. That's P-H-O-E-N-I-X, soul, S-O-L, H-P as in Peter. And then she has a contact information on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, and she uses the Phoenix Soul HP uh, for all of them. So Phoenix Soul HP at Phoenix Soul HP for Twitter, Phoenix Soul comma H period P period Inc at Phoenix Soul HP dot Inc for Facebook, Pinterest is Phoenix Soul, Instagram is Phoenix Soul HP. So once again, this is Judith Dreyer. I am the author of At the Garden's Gate book and blog. My book is available through my website, which is www.judithdreyer.com, and that's D as in David, R-E-Y-E-R. And it's also available on several distribution arms, such as Amazon, Nook, Goodreads, and more. I'd like to remind all of you to please like and share the podcast. Let's get this word out. It's time for practical action and profound interchange so our natural world is valued once again. Bye for now and enjoy your day.